Hello and welcome back to Planet Nibiru, where anything is possible. Today, we are looking at the jack-o'-lantern, where it came from, and how it has become an integral part of Halloween. Every October, carved pumpkins peer out from the porches and doorsteps in the United States and other parts of the world. Gourd-like orange fruits inscribed with ghoulish faces and illuminated by candles are a sure sign of the Halloween season. According to Wikipedia, a jack-o'-lantern is a carved pumpkin or turnip lantern associated with the holiday of Halloween and named after the phenomenon of a strange light flickering over peat bogs called Will-o'-the-Wisp or Jack-o'-the-Lantern. In a jack-o'-lantern, the top of the pumpkin or turnip is cut off to form a lid. The inside flesh is scooped out and an image, usually a monstrous or comical face, is carved out of the rind to expose the hollow interior. To create the lantern effect, a light source is placed within before the lid is closed. The light source is traditionally a flame such as a candle or tea light, but artificial jack-o'-lanterns with electric lights are also marketed. It is common to see jack-o'-lanterns on doorsteps and otherwise used as decorations prior to and on Halloween. The term jack-o'-lantern was originally used to describe the visual phenomenon ignis fatis, literally foolish fire known as a will-o'-the-wisp in English folklore. Used especially in East England, its earliest known dates range back to the 1660s. The term will-o'-the-wisp uses wisp, a bundle of sticks, or sometimes a lantern or torch, and the proper name will, thus will of the torch, or the term jack-o'-the-lantern is basically the same construction. The carving of vegetables has been a common practice in many parts of the world, and gourds were one of the earliest plant species domesticated by humans, about 10,000 years ago. For example, gourds were used to carve lanterns by the Maori tribes over 700 years ago. The Maori word for a gourd also describes a lampshade. It is believed that the custom of making jack-o'-lanterns at Halloween began in Ireland in the 19th century. Turnips, or mangrel wurzels, hollowed out to act as lanterns and often carved with grotesque faces were used at Halloween in parts of Ireland and in the Scottish Highlands. In these Gaelic-speaking regions, Halloween was also the festival of Sam Hain, and was seen as a time when supernatural beings and the souls of the dead roamed the earth. The belief that the souls of the dead roaming the earth at Halloween was also found in other parts of Europe. Jack-o'-lanterns were made at Halloween in Somerset during the 19th century. By those who made them, the lanterns were variously said to represent the spirits of supernatural beings. They were also said to ward off evil spirits. For example, sometimes they were used by Halloween geysers to frighten people, and sometimes they were set on windowsills to keep harmful spirits out of one's home. It has also been suggested that the jack-o'-lanterns originally represented Christian souls in purgatory, as Halloween is the eve of All Saints Day. At Halloween in 1835, the Dublin Penny Journal carried a lengthy discourse on the legend of the Jack of the Lantern, which we will recount later. In 1837, the Limerick Chronicle referred to a local pub holding a carved gourd competition and presenting a prize to the best crown of Jack McLantern. The term McLantern also appears in an 1841 publication of the same paper. There is also evidence that turnips were used to carve what was called a Hoberty's Lantern in Worcestershire, England at the end of the 18th century. The folklorist Jabel Allies recalls. In more juvenile days, I remember to have seen peasant boys make what they've called a Hoberty's Lantern, while hollowing out a turnip and cutting eyes, nose, and mouth therein. In the true moonlike style, They've lighted it up by inserting the stump of a candle they used to place it upon a hedge to frighten unwary travelers at night. Adaptations of Washington Irving's short story The Legend of Sleepy Hollow often depict the headless horseman with a pumpkin or jack-o'-lantern in place of his severed head. In the original story, a shattered pumpkin is discovered next to Ichabod Crane's abandoned hat on the morning after Crane's supposed encounter with the horseman. The application of the term to carved pumpkins in American English is first attested to in 1834. 
The Carved Pumpkin Lantern's association with Halloween is recorded in the 1st of November 1866 edition of the Daily News from Kingston, Ontario. The old time custom of keeping up in Halloween was not forgotten last night by the youngsters of the city. They had their maskings and their merrymakings and perambulated through the streets after dark in a way which was no doubt amusing to themselves. There was a great sacrifice of pumpkins from which to make transparent heads and face lighted up by the unfailing two inches of tallow candle. The poet John Greenleaf Whittier, who was born in Massachusetts in 1807, wrote the poem The Pumpkin in 1850. O oh, fruit loved of boyhood, the old days recalling, when wood grapes were purpling and brown nuts were falling, when wild ugly faces we carved in its skin, glaring out through the dark with a candle within. According to an article from Harper's Young People in 1885 in which Agnes Carr Sage wrote, It is an ancient British custom to light great bonfires, bonfire to clear before the winter froze the ground on Halloween and carry blazing faggots about on long poles, but in place of this, American boys delight in the funny grinning jack-o'-lanterns made of huge yellow pumpkins with a candle inside. In the United States, the carved pumpkin was first associated with the harvest season in general, long before it became an emblem of Halloween. In 1900, an article on Thanksgiving Entertaining recommended a lit jack-o'-lantern as part of the festivities. Jack-o'-lanterns indeed make the holiday season seem complete. They add fun and interactivity to a holiday filled with screams, frights, and delights. Yes, people have indeed been making jack-o'-lanterns at Halloween for centuries, a practice that originates from the Irish myth about a man named Stingy Jack. According to the story, Stingy Jack invited the devil to have a drink with him. True to his name, Stingy Jack didn't want to pay for his drink, so he convinced the devil to turn himself into a coin that Jack could use to buy their drinks. Once the devil did so, Jack decided to keep the money and put it into his pocket next to a silver cross, which prevented the devil from changing back into his original form. Jack eventually freed the devil under the condition that he would not bother Jack for one year, and that should Jack die, he would not claim his soul. The next year, Jack again tricked the devil into climbing into a tree to pick a piece of fruit. While he was up in the tree, Jack carved a sign of the cross into the tree's bark so the devil could not come down until the devil promised not to bother Jack for 10 more years. Soon after, Jack died. As the legend goes, God would not allow such an unsavory figure into heaven. The devil, upset by the trick that Jack had played on him and keeping to his word, would not claim his soul, allowing Jack into hell. So Jack was banished. He sent Jack off into the night with only a burning lump of coal to light his way. Jack put the coal into a carved out turnip and has been roaming the earth ever since. The Irish refer to this ghostly figure as Jack of the Lantern, and then it simply became Jack o' Lantern. In Ireland and Scotland, people began making their own versions of Jack o' Lanterns by carving scary faces into turnips or potatoes and placing them in windows or near doors to frighten away Stingy Jack and other wandering evil spirits. In England, large beets are used. Immigrants from these countries brought the jack-o'-lantern tradition with them when they came to the United States. They soon found that pumpkins, a fruit native to America, made a perfect jack-o'-lantern. So tell us what you think about this jack-o'-lantern story. Get in the comment section and let us know. Will you be carving jack-o'-lanterns this year? If you do, we'd love to see some pictures. Thanks for all your likes, subscribes, and comments, and we look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.